Hey guys, the Network Burger here. Hope you've been doing well. So in this video, we will be focusing on a little bit more security stuff, namely finding rogue DHCP servers and what we can do to prevent rogue DHCP servers from issuing IPs out to our network. So let's get into the video. Now let's look at this topology because this might seem familiar to many of you where we have the internet that's coming into a router and this router will also be acting as a DHCP server for us. And then it would connect to a switch which might connect to another switch and from there we just have all of our hosts on the network, even access points connected to the switches, giving internet or network access. Pretty straightforward, right? Now what happens if we introduce a rogue DHCP server to the mix? Now this might happen one of two ways. One way is completely accidental where a user might bring their house router with them to work because they figure, hey, I have a single cable, but if I connect this device, I'll have more ports and then I can connect more stuff in my office and do more things. And what they don't realize is maybe they have the DHCP server running off of that device and now they're flooding the network with incorrect DHCP options or uh, offers and people get wrong IPs and then suddenly the network doesn't work and people don't have internet. Terrible, bad time. And the other thing that might happen is you might find malicious people that actually will go into the office and they'll connect their devices, act as a DHCP server, and they'll give out valid IP addresses, but they'll use themselves as the default gateway. And then they'll be able to see all of the traffic that passes through their device and cause all kinds of havoc. So there's two things we need to take note of. One is we want to find out if there is a rogue DHCP server on the network. And the other point is, we want to stop rogue DHCP servers from being able to give out IP addresses. So let's look at that. Now, the first way that you could typically see if there is some form of a rogue DHCP server running on the network is you could just run Wireshark and see if you get more offers from different types of hosts. Because if you have a single device that's supposed to do DHCP, but you see multiple offers, then that's already a dead giveaway. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a Wireshark capture against one of these ports on a switch on ether2 in this example but you could have connected your laptop directly um, with your LAN cable run Wireshark against your port and then you'd be able to see if you get multiple DHCP offers so I'll give you an example of what that looks like I'm just going to connect onto a virtual PC here and then with this virtual PC I'm just going to do an IP DHCP minus R to renew and then you'll see something that we call Dora it's basically discover offer request and acknowledge <laughs> in short terms is we've basically obtained an IP address. And here I can see I've obtained the IP of 172.16.0.253 slash 24 with my gateway being 172.16.0.1, which is great because that is my actual LAN network. So if I just minimize this black box, we can see this is the normal computer customer network. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making this bigger for some reason. Let me just pause this Wireshark capture because I want to show you in the packet capture, if we look for DHCP messages, we will pick up something strange. So let me hit enter. And here I can already pick up that something weird is happening, especially if I look at these DHCP offers, because here I can see I have multiple DHCP offers and they're both from different IP addresses. It's a different gateway. So one is from a legitimate gateway, 172.16.0.1, which is my microtech that I manage. But then I see something else with the IP of 172.16.1.1 has also sent out an offer to the network. So this is already telling me there's another DHCP server. So this is bad. But maybe you don't want to jump on Wireshark and do packet captures and stuff like that. Microtech also offers a way that you can pick it up through your DHCP server settings. So what we can do is actually log on to the DHCP server. So this is my R1. And then from the R1 router, I can go into the IP DHCP server. And then from the server, you can set up alerts. Now this you can do per interface. So any interface that's running DHCP, you can set this up for, and it will pick up if there is any rogue DHCP server. It will also tell you what the MAC address is of that unknown server. And you can even run a customized script that could do stuff like print stuff into a log file for you or send an email to you to notify you that there is a rogue server. Now, let's quickly set up an alert. I'm just going to click on the plus. Now we can specify an interface. So in my case, I actually have a VLAN called LAN with the IP address of 172.16.01 slash 24 bound to it. 
and that is where my DHCP server is running off of. So I'm actually going to set my interface to that LAN VLAN. If you're just using the normal interface, that's fine, but this is it. Next, we need to specify our valid servers. So these are the MAC addresses of a DHCP or multiple servers that we know that are supposed to issue out IPs. Now, I'm just going to get the MAC address off of this LAN interface. So I'll just double click on it, copy the MAC address, navigate back and just paste this into the valid servers. Now that that's done, if I click apply, it's actually already gonna work and it will find out if there is any other DHCP servers maybe running in the network. But again, this big white box, this is a script box. So from here, you could issue all kinds of commands, but let's just do a very basic command where I'll just log the information. So I'll do a log, let's say error, then I can give it a message, equals some quotation marks, and we can say rogue DHCP server discovered, discovered. I can click apply, I can hit okay. I'm just going to open up this DHCP alert again, and I might just open up my logs as well, so we can actually see in the log file if there is some type of error that is picked up. So what I'm going to do now is just issue another request from that computer, so I can just navigate back onto Eve. And I actually think I still have a box open in another window for this. There we go. So let's just release our IP, renew our IP. It's going to do the Dora. And it obtains an IP. It got the same IP address, which is great because we still have the normal default gateway. I'm sure you'll notice this is also a little bit of a gamble because the real server can still issue out the right information. So this rogue person is kind of just hoping to get, <laughs> get a hit, but luckily for us, he hasn't yet. But if we go onto our main router on our DHCP server router, we can see here it has picked up an unknown server. So you can actually see the MAC address of the device that is also trying to offer out DHCP leases to clients. And then you can track this MAC address down using like the MAC table, see which port it connects to, and maybe shut those ports. That's one way to just really get rid of it. But now we can also see we're being notified if there is some type of DHCP rogue server. Now, how do we fix this so that they can't do this to our network? Well, what we can do is we can enable DHCP snooping on our switches in order to state which uplink ports are allowed DHCP messages. So if I go into a bridge interface and I'm going to actually log on to one of the switches, switch number one. I am on switch number one now. If I go to bridge and I go to the ports and all of these ports have been added to the bridge, you can see there is something called trusted. Now by default, all of this is set to no, but since it isn't using the DHCP snooping yet, it doesn't do anything. And that means that DHCP traffic can just work from any port. Now in order for us to make this work, we can go to our bridge settings. And then from the bridge, we can double click it. And then we can enable DHCP snooping. You just click on this option and that's it. There is additional stuff you can do with DHCP snooping, namely DHCP option 82, but that's more advanced stuff and you need an additional DHCP server for that. So we won't dive into that in this video, but just the DHCP snooping we can enable. Once that is enabled, that means that none of these ports will now allow DHCP traffic. So us as administrators, we need to understand how our network is connected. So for me, it's now very straightforward and easy because on Eve, I can see exactly which ports are uplinking where. So on my switch one, I know that ether one is going to my DHCP server, my router, but also ether two is going down to another switch. So I am going to set ether one and two to be trusted ports so that they can participate with the DHCP, but I'm not going to allow anything else because this malicious user was connected on ether 10 and they were able to send out DHCP messages. So all that I'm going to do is on switch one, I'm going to change Ether1 to be trusted. I'll just tick trusted and I'll do the same for Ether2, make it trusted. I'm just quickly going to log on to switch number two as well. So I'm just going to win box onto that quickly. Switch number two. And if I look at switch two, in its case, I'm only going to allow Ether1 since that is the uplink to switch one. 
So let's get on to switch two. There we go. So with switch two, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to enable the HCP snooping. And then I'm just going to allow ether one to be trusted. So now that I've done that, I've effectively eliminated any way for this malicious user to be able to hand out DHCP addresses to our network because they can, they, the offers just won't be there anymore. So I'm going to give you the example and I'm going to use Wireshark for this again. So if I do another capture against Ether2 and I... I need to stop opening up windows to that uh, other machine. So with this VPC, let's just release and renew again. There I saw a few things happening. So let's stop this. Let's search for the DHCP. And this time around, when I look at the DHCP, I can see I am only receiving a single offer. I am not receiving multiple offers now. So only my real DHCP server is able to actually offer me an IP address. Now this means that only my devices can get IPs from my DHCP server. So if anybody else tries to plug in anywhere else, it's not going to work for them. All right, so I'm going to end off the video here. It really doesn't need to be any longer than that since we are really just looking at how we can discover those rogue servers and what we can do to just help us not receive any weird offers on the network so that we are in charge of the offers. So I hope the video has been informative. I'd really like to thank my YouTube and Patreon members as well as you guys who have watched the video. Thank you so much and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.